Hello everybody, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this walkthrough of the Lovely Ladies Tarot by Brittany Keller. This is a indie deck that I purchased off of Amazon and this is this came about in kind of a fun way. Brittany Keller is actually the artist who illustrated the cover of my book, Unlocking the Tarot, Create Your Own Keys. This is just a galley copy. It's It's been beat up because I've been referencing it and playing with it and looking at it, but this is due out in October. It's being published by Llewellyn. I'm so excited. There's a foreword by Barbara Moore, but this art I freaking love. They actually hired an illustrator to do this art and it was Brittany Keller who did it. So I think she did a beautiful job. And when I found out she had a tarot deck, of course I had to purchase it because <laughs> that's how I roll. So this is such a fun deck and I had totally, I don't know if I'd encountered it before, but it's just beautiful. I think she initially like created this as just a majors only deck and then she created the minors and then I think you can still get the majors or minors separately. And then she put it all together in a combined deck. So it says on the back, lovely, may you discover your divine beauty and inner wisdom with this deck. So really gorgeous gold foiling. You'll see there's a lot of gold foiling all through the deck. No, there we go. So it's in a nice two piece sturdy box and it comes with a little guidebook that has a good little page on each of the cards. I have not spent a lot of time with the guidebook to be completely fair, but I just, the deck really works and speaks for itself. <laughs> so let me pull this out. This is what the backing looks like. It's got a beautiful like sort of purple to pink pastel gradient here and this gold planetary glyph on the back. Really simple back with gold foil detailing, super pretty. And then it does have gold gilding on the edges. I think the official word for that is gold edge foiling. <laughs> uh, anyways, I don't know. Somebody told me that recently and now it's stuck. So let me put these things aside. I'll keep the book handy just in case we want to reference it, but let's zoom in and look at the cards. Oh, real quick, cardstock. So this one does feel pretty glossy. You can see the reflection of my studio light there. And there, so there's quite a bit of shine on these cards, but I think it's a beautiful effect, frankly. And they have a lovely glide and fan. I think they do clump a little when they shuffle. We'll see that at the end. Yeah, they're even clumping a little bit in the fan, but that's coming about because there is a little tiny bit of a wrap from the edge foiling that does create a bit of clumpiness. I think that will break in over time, we'll see. If it doesn't, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna trim it. I just, I think I'm just gonna continue to use it as it is because it's really pretty. All right, let's zoom in. This deck to me feels like, it's very, very people-y and it's very portrait based. So we're getting a lot of, we're gonna get a lot of sort of like hip or shoulder high images of people. It's feminine, it is called the Lovely Ladies Tarot. And so it's got to me a lot of the sort of like sassiness that I've looked at other decks to try to get, but the Rider Waite symbology does come through. It's just a little bit stripped back, which I actually really love. So here we have the fool, we've got the satchel, we have the sense of like almost like a purity. There's also a lot of variety in the types of people that we see on the cards, which I adore. Here we have the magician. I love her earrings. Those remind me of Danny, Miss Danny Mystic. Love it. She's got earrings kind of like that. I don't think they have the dangly bits, but they're otherwise very similar. Then we have the high priestess. Love her. The empress. We've got the sheaths of wheat here. And if you look very closely, it's in gold foil detailing, but on her earrings, she has the Venus symbol in little red heart-shaped earrings. So the symbology definitely comes through. Here we have the emperor and we have a single onk earring. Again, symbology, we have the rams on the throne. And the hierophant, she's doing the peace symbol. She's got the staff. There's a cross on her necklace. She's got a, a more stern expression too, which I enjoy. So as you can see, there are foil detailing on the front of the cards. So we have this gold framework that goes around. There's little gold stars that are on the cards. The number and the title is also in gold foiling. The lovers. I love this like fire kind of flamey tattoo here. The chariot. She is beautiful. Strength and the hermit. I, I absolutely love all the gold foiling coming out of the lantern behind her. It really catches the light with that little bit of a spin. Just gorgeous. I'm just gonna say gorgeous a lot because this is very much beautiful through and through. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune. She literally looks like somebody who is just looking for a turn of the wheel or just waiting for a turn of the wheel so that things can shift for her. 
Justice, the Hanged Man. I love what's happening with the hair here so much. This death card is stunning. I freaking adore it. And Temperance, the Devil. We have, if you look closer at her tattoos, right? She's got a lot of the traditional symbology from the original card tattooed all over her, which is amazing. The tower. I like that she's the tower. Like it's being broken up or broken apart it, just above the mind space. At least that's how I see it. It could be that she's meant to be standing in front of the tower, but like she's on fire. Like it's a whole thing. And then we have the star and the moon, the sun, judgment, the world. And then we're into the minors. So now we have the ace of wands. You can see that it, it follows the Rider Waite Smith just, I think, just, just enough that it's very easy to navigate this deck. The two of wands, the three of wands. I love that we can see that these are different, right? They're still similar in this depiction because there's not a lot of scenery and stuff to go on, but we do get the vibe, right? This person's staying where they are, but they're considering, they're taking in all options. And this one's on her way, right? She's leaving. This dress is just beautiful. Four of wands, love that. And five of wands, she's by herself, which is a little bit tricksy, but we have the wands kind of in that more Marseille-like shape or arrangement, which helps, I think, to tie in the meaning of the card really nicely. Same thing here with the six of wands. We have the laurel wreath and then the seven of wands. The, the funny thing is with these wands along the side like that, they're almost reminiscent of the eight of wands. But what I like is that she's just kind of casual and she's got this one slung over her shoulder and is looking back, like daring somebody to mess with her. I think that's great. Love the eight of wands here. This reminds me of Jessamine Stan Stanley who was a yogi that I was familiar with. Not, I didn't know her personally, but I was familiar with her work because we were doing similar things in the yoga space. It just reminds me of her. The Nine of Wands. I would, wouldn't mind if this, if she had a little bit more like of that exhaustion, like a little more of the, the sign that it's not as like easy to hold your position when you're in this space. And I love how she's just like, no problem. She's got all the wands in one arm. She doesn't seem to be struggling and she's like fixing her hair. Like, it's great. It's like, I got this. Then we have the page, the Knight of Wands. She's very Knight of Wandsy. I love it. She looks like she could be like literally in mid dance. Queen of Wands and the King of Wands. So I really like that we can see, I think, the, the water of element energy in the queen. We can see the softness and the, I mean, the Queen of Wands is, is not super soft as the queens go, but she's soft-ish. <laughs> And definitely looks softer than the king. So we get like more intensity, I guess you could say, with the king energy, even though they're all feminine presenting. So here we have the ace of cups, the two of cups. I love the forehead kiss here. Everybody knows I love a good forehead kiss. It's the best. Three of cups, four of cups. It's interesting here because lots of cups are being offered and she's just checked out. Five of cups the tears. This is adorable. The six of cups. It's so sweet. Seven of cups, eight of cups. This one is very similar. If you think about it to the five of cups, right? Only the difference is that this one, it's like the cups are like sort of sinking down into the water, but in this one, she's pouring them out and she's just surrounded by all that she's poured out, which is very symbolically rich. If you stop and think about it. And then we have the nine of cups. Adore this image so much. And the Ten of Cups. I do really feel that the, the, the absence of multiple people having a lot of engagement, like for example, we do see that like in the Three of Cups and the Two of Cups, we see multiple people together. And I think that could have been done more often in some of these more people-y cards. Like for example, in the Ten of Cups, I'm used to seeing a sign of like family, right? And yes, you can be your own family. In fact, what does this tattoo say? I think it might say, I'm gonna get out a magnifier, hold on. Oh my gosh. So I got it a magnifier to see what that said. I don't think you can see it without magnifying. So let's see if I can do it for you. So this actually says, love yourself, which is great. I freaking love that. Okay, so maybe this one doesn't need to be so peoply. It's like finding that ultimate bliss, but on your own. Page of Cups, adore her. Knight of Cups, I love that the vision is coming from the heart. I know that's supposed to be a necklace, right? But like, I'm seeing it as like, leading from the heart, which is how I see the Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. I love that she's like holding what looks to be almost the ace. Her cup is overflowing. And King of Cups. In the swords, we have the ace. Again, very traditional. The sword is piercing the crown. The Two of Swords. This is typically a card of decisions, and the composition definitely is, is different here than we usually would see in the Two of Swords, but it, def it does work. 
this Three of Swords is quite potent. You're not quite sure, right, looking at this card, if these swords have been have come from her back and this person shoved them in from behind. You know, we see this person in front just in so much pain and this person behind just kind of seeming sort of neutral. It is interesting that they've got that tattoo. I don't know. So you can see it that way. You could also see this as somebody who's in pain and this person standing with them and holding them. It's just an interesting perspective for sure. And then we have the Four of Swords, the Five. I love the feminine empowerment throughout this entire deck. Here we have the Six of Swords. This one, typically, like, I like this. Like, the Five of Swords, she looks like she could be in that tyrannical place. The Six of Swords, I typically see this as somebody that's moving on, right? And we do get that, but just like in the Six of Swords, we're often bringing that baggage with us, and she clearly is. But I'm missing that sort of journey over water vibe. I know they don't always have to be that way, but I do miss it a little here. Seven of swords. Okay. Oh, I see them now. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So you have three swords in her arms, but she's got a sword tattoo, two sword earrings, and a sword barrette. So there is actually seven swords on the card. That's super clever. I love the way that these swords are arranged all around her neck like that, and the way they feel so, like, hemmed in on her. Nine of swords. Yes. It's really important, I think, to look at the tattoos, right? For sure. We have an open eye and a closed eye. It's funny because down here we have a skull, a candle, maybe, or something. It might not be a candle, but we have a skull. And then this, I'm not sure. It looks like it would be, at first I was like, oh, that could be 13. It could be a symbol of death, like she's afraid of death kind of thing. But it looks like it goes X, I, I, x almost i think it's meant to be 13 i'm not sure i'm not sure that's a little tricky but the colors oh the colors are so rich throughout the entire thing this ten of swords oh my gosh look at her face and we have the page the knight i usually see the knight of swords much more active i'm missing that here i'm gonna leave that aside and see if we can see what the knight of pentacles looks like by comparison here we have the queen of swords She's got the butterfly tattoo on her chest and our king of swords. Now we're into the pentacles. We have the ace, the two, very traditional composition there. The three, again, this is one where I would have loved to see a few people together doing some work together. The four of pentacles. Okay. I'm not necessarily getting that sort of clinging to all of our worldly possessions or clinging to our security or safety in this card. The five of pentacles, not seeing that typical again the five of pentacles being feeling like sort of shut out or feeling like we don't belong or we're not included or feeling like we're on our own and we're struggling I'm not seeing the struggle in this card the way that i would typically look for it the six of pentacles i think this is beautiful this works for me seven of pentacles i think pregnancy this is a great place to put pregnancy i think i absolutely love this i love that it sort of highlights the need for patience and she also has a tattoo but that is nope that's the um that's the artist's signature this is really pretty. Here we have the Eight of Pentacles. I enjoy that. The Nine of Pentacles. I'm missing her bird or her snail friend, and I don't see either. I wish there was a bird or a snail here. And then we have the Ten. So see, we do get that sort of generational kind of idea here. Love the Page of Pentacles, she is gorgeous. The Knight of Pentacles. So here we have the comparisons. They're in a very similar posture, right? But this one, it looks like she's praying almost. This one looks like she's sort of pausing to assess her environment. This does feel Knight of Pentacles -y to me. She feels like somebody who would definitely like be reliable. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles. This almost looks like it could be a King of Swords, if not, you know, just demeanor wise. Or definitely looks like a boss though, which is obviously the, the point. All right. So now that we've zoomed out, a couple things on the shuffle. So hand over hand is really nice and simple. The gloss, glossy decks like this, it's not a sticky gloss. It might have been when I first got it. I can't remember, but I don't think so. I, I don't remember having any issue with the cards sticking together or anything like that. But it's got a really nice silky glide this way. I believe the riffle feels a little bit clumpy because of that foil grip. Yeah, there it is. So you can see it, right? You can see how... We get that, that clumpiness happening in the riffle. I'm curious what a corner riffle would be like. 
That's a little bit better. No, it's still doing the same thing, actually. I remember struggling with this. I used this deck in my monthly member reading. So for those of you who don't know, I have a membership here. It's kind of like a Patreon. It just exists here on YouTube. And one of the, the big things that I do for that membership every month is for magical and badass tiers, I do a monthly live stream where I do readings. And I always have about five decks or so to choose from. And I use this in that. Yeah, I don't like the clumping. It's almost like I have to revert back to hand over hand because of it. And it, it feels rough on the thumbs. It feels like something's catching because of course it is catching which is a shame if I yeah it's about two to four cards at a time it feels like it just affects it I'm gonna see I'm gonna try again the corner I think it's better honestly I think the corner shuffle is better Let me do that again yeah one more time yeah it feels more satisfying but I don't always have a table like when I'm doing my monthly readings I'm usually in front of my laptop so I don't have a lot of space but the corner shuffle is much nicer, I would say. Which makes me wonder if the, oh, that time I totally messed it up. But that makes me wonder if the, if the side shuffle, how that would feel. Let's see. Nope, I'd have to drop it. I'm really usually only very good at side shuffling if the deck is big and has some bend to it. Yeah, it's getting, it's smoothing out a little. Just the more, I mean, I say that, but that's probably in my head. Yeah, that's probably in my head. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I've just been babbling. Anyway, that is the lovely ladies tarot. Let's take a quick look at the guidebook. So in here we get a little intro from Brittany the Artist, a little bit about the, like an introduction to the Major Arcana. And then for the card entries, you get the title, keywords and reverse keywords, and then a little description of the card. So let's take a look, for example, at, which card, what card was I thinking of? Let's just pull one out and we'll do, we'll do a sample. So this is temperance, 14. So it says balance, moderation, patience, purpose, and reversed is imbalance, excess, and self-healing. It says a curvy woman with long flowing hair holds two cups and pours from one to the other, representing the balance between two different aspects of your life. A beautiful rainbow shines behind her, representing the rewards that come with patience. Temperance brings balance to your life and your soul through moderation and patience. You may be giving too much to one aspect of your life and neglecting the other pieces. Align with your true purpose and be diligent about finding balance in your life, lovely. Okay, let me pull another one and see if we can get a minor. Yeah, there's the Ace of Swords. So let's take a look at that one. Should be after cups. There we go. Ace of Swords, breakthrough, mental clarity, enlightenment, new ideas. Reversed is clouded judgment, re-examining old ideas and inner clarity. And it says a ringed hand holds a jeweled blade into the sky representing enlightenment and divinity. At the top of the blade sits a golden crown, a sign of victory, success, and wealth. The ace is a sign of triumph and brilliance, but the jagged peaks in the distance represent challenges on the road to that triumph. The ace of swords is a sign of encouragement. You may be on the verge of a significant breakthrough, lovely. Now is an excellent time to start a new project and use your new sight to make clear what was once hazy. All right, all right, all right. That works. All righty. It's cute that she like calls you lovely in every entry somewhere. That's kind of fun. So that my friends is the lovely ladies tarot. I'll have a link to where you can purchase this down below from the creators Etsy shop. Like I said, I knew I was going to buy this no matter what, because I'm like, she illustrated my book. So I have to have her deck. But anyways, these might make a fun pair. I'm just saying maybe, maybe. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out. As always, an extra big thank you goes out to my Unicorn Fam channel members. Thank you so much for all of your support of my work here. It means so much. And to everybody who participates on the channel by just watching or commenting or whatnot, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And until next time, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.